It's April 10th, 1912, when the RMS Titanic left Southampton Harbor to usher in a new era of civil shipping. The steel giant, with its exquisite interior fittings, looked more like a floating luxury hotel than an ordinary steamer. Her modern watertight bulkheads and advanced pumping system earned the Titanic a reputation for being unsinkable in the public eye. Today, we know this was nothing more than a gigantic fallacy. In the late evening hours of April 14, 1912, the whole pride of the White Star Line collided with an iceberg and sank a few hours later in the freezing cold waters of the Atlantic. Of the more than 2,200 people on board, 1,514 did not survive the accident. This was mainly due to the fact that the Titanic did not carry enough lifeboats with it. What's more, in the ensuing panic, many boats were launched before they were even half full. After the sinking, the steel ship's skeletons slumbered undiscovered at the bottom of the ocean for more than 70 years before it was finally rediscovered in 1985. Since then, the wreck of the Titanic has been explored many times using submarines and underwater robots. Numerous artifacts were also recovered from the belly of the ship, which has virtually disappeared these days after rust has taken over. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Today, we'd like to take a closer look with you at 10 unique Titanic finds whose backgrounds are moving, sad, or even terrifying. Love Letter when Titanic cabin attendant Richard Getz was having a quiet moment, he decided to write a letter to the person he was missing the most, his wife. Tragically, however, Richard's wife was never to receive his written declarations of love. In addition to his tender feelings, the man also wrote a few other lines on paper. What not many people know, a few days before the collision with the iceberg, the Titanic escaped a collision by a hair's breadth. When the luxury liner left on April 10, 1912, it almost collided with the New York. The powerful pull of the ship's propellers had torn the ropes of the iron liner, bringing the stern of the New York dangerously close to the Titanic. A last-minute collision was averted by the thoughtful intervention of Captain Smith and the use of the tugboat Vulcan to pull the New York away. In his letter, Richard also told his wife about this incident. Many people saw an ominous omen in the near miss. Pocket Watch Together with his wife Miriam, the Russian Sinai Cantor took part in the Titanic's maiden voyage as a second-class passenger. Later, the man's pocket watch was to be found, which once again reminds us of the moving last moments in his life. When it was certain that the ship would sink, Sinai took his beloved wife to one of the lifeboats. True to the motto, women and children first, which some officers interpreted as men under no circumstances, Sinai was denied access to the rescued dinghy. His lifeless body was later recovered from the icy water. Before this terrible stroke of fate, the couple had dreamed of starting a new life in New York. Sinai wanted to study medicine in the United States, while Miriam wanted a career as a dentist. Violin You've probably all heard the touching story of the Titanic band. After the collision with the iceberg, the eight-piece band was commissioned to provide musical accompaniment to the loading of the lifeboats in order to calm the frightened passengers. Many eyewitnesses later reported that the musicians continued to play to the bitter end. None of them would survive the sinking of the Titanic. After the body of Wallace Hartley, violinist and leader of the band, was found, it was brought to England and buried. Tens of thousands of people lined the path of the funeral procession to pay their last respects to the intrepid musician. Several years after the Titanic sank to the depths of the ocean, a small leather bag was recovered from the wreckage. 
No one knew what was in the bag at first, but it didn't take long for investigators to figure it out. The bag contained a violin that was believed to belong to one of the men who had been playing as the ship sank, Wallace Henry Hartley. Musicians who were on the Titanic made a beautiful decision in their final hours on this earth to help ease the minds of the many men, women, and children who were destined to lose their lives in the icy waters of the ocean. Many of the passengers were beginning to panic as certain death was lingering only a few moments away. These musicians did everything within their power to calm the passengers and decided to serenade them as the ship slowly sank to the depths. Their music helped calm the minds and hearts of the children and adults on board and made their final moments a little bit easier. According to eyewitnesses who managed to survive the crash, the final songs to be played by the Titanic's band were Nearer My God to Thee and Autumn. Wallace Hartley was one of these incredible individuals, and inside of the leather bag that had been found in the wreckage, an inscription was written on a metal tag that read, For Wallace, on the occasion of our engagement, from Maria. His violin was cleaned and given back to Wallace's former fiancée, Maria Robinson. I can't imagine the emotions that must have washed over her when her husband's violin had been found after all this time. The violin would remain in her family for many years until it was eventually offered at auction in the early 2000s. The violin was confirmed to be a genuine artifact, and a little-known fact is that Hartley's body was found in the wreckage as well. By 2013, one of the world's most prized musical instruments was sold at auction for an astounding one and a half million dollars. It was purchased by a British collector in a 10-minute flash sale. To this day, the violin remains one of the most expensive pieces of Titanic memorabilia to ever be sold. Ticket a look at the ticket of a woman named Marion shows actually she should never have boarded the Titanic. In fact, the ticket was for the ship Majestic, but a twist of fate had meant that Marion finally found herself on board the Titanic. Her originally booked trip had been delayed, which is why she was offered a place in the White Star Line's floating luxury hotel in return. Of course, at that time no one could have guessed the tragic fate of the Titanic. However, if Marion had known that the crossing to New York would end in catastrophe, she would never have set foot on the steamer. Shoe At first glance, the next find seems to be just an old, tattered men's shoe. However, if we become aware of what this personal garment actually represents, we might all notice an oppressive feeling in our chests. On the one hand, the simple shoe reminds us of the countless victims, many of whom hope to start a new, better life in the United States. However, the deadly waves of the sea would destroy all these dreams in one fell swoop. In addition, the condition of the salvaged shoe once again shows us the elemental forces that are really in inherent in Mother Nature, the gigantic expanses of the sea to which the then most modern passenger ship of all time fell victim are as overwhelming as they are frightening. Radio Before we get this wrong, the radio that was used on the Titanic is still at the bottom of the North Atlantic. In fact, however, there's long been a major ethical debate about whether the technical equipment should be brought back to the surface. In theory, it would be possible to salvage the radio with a diving robot in the belly of the ship. The problem. On its journey, the robot would most likely encounter the mortal remains of many victims and thus disturb the peace of the dead. Since the wreck of the Titanic is to be preserved as a memorial, corresponding expeditions have often been been thwarted in the past. It's uncertain whether the radio transmitter of the Marconi Society will one day be allowed to be raised. At the time, the device had the most powerful radio technology ever placed on a ship. However, since the station was run by a private company and not by the crew, it was primarily personal radio telegrams for the more affluent passengers that were transmitted. For this reason, some ice warnings arrived at the navigation bridge with a delay, or not at all. 
big piece. It becomes clear to us why the next find has the meaningful name the big piece when we take a closer look at its dimensions. The fragment of the ship's casing weighs 15 tons and is over 8 meters long, the largest titanic object ever recovered. Most likely, this portion of the starboard side came loose when the Titanic broke in two. The example also makes it clear to us once again that the steamer ultimately fell victim to the sheer elemental force of nature. The forces acting on the ship's hull during the sinking were so intense that the 52,000-ton colossus could no longer withstand them and broke apart like a matchstick. Angel Statue An angel statue once adorned the pompous grand staircase of the Titanic. For some people, however, the religious figure had a deeper meaning. In the run-up to the maiden voyage, it was often claimed that not even God was capable of sinking the Titanic. However, some deeply religious citizens saw in such claims grave blasphemies and that the Lord of the Worlds would not let this go unpunished. At the time, many were convinced that it was ultimately human pride that provoked divine wrath and thus sealed the dreadful fate of the Titanic. Engine Telegraph Unlike the radio, whose background story we've already told you, the Titanic's telegraph was recovered in 1987. At that time, such engine telegraphs were used to transmit commands from the bridge to the engine room. This type of communication also played a central role in the collision with the iceberg. However, what orders William Murdoch actually gave at the time is still a matter of debate today. While in James Cameron's 1997 blockbuster were shown the first officer giving the command full stop even before the collision, it's more likely that the Titanic only slowed down after the collision with the iceberg. The truth is, there are many unknowns regarding the Titanic. Even many of those who were actually on the boat on that terrible evening share conflicting stories, mostly because the chaos that ensued was unlike anything they'd ever seen before. It's easy to understand how the passengers' judgment and memories became clouded so quickly. Bell. It's April 14, 1912, at around 11.40 p.m., when a shimmering white disaster rises out of the water before the eyes of lookout Frederick Fleet. Directly ahead, the man in the crow's nest discovers a massive iceberg. Fleet quick-wittedly rang the alarm bell three times, and in the same breath he phoned the bridge about the approaching danger. Many decades later, the very bell that heralded the end of the Titanic was brought back to light. It's now one of the exhibits in the Titanic Museum in Belfast. Unlike so many other crew members, Frederick Fleet was supposed to survive the sinking of the luxury liner. He owed this to second officer Charles Lightoller, who put the lookout in charge of lifeboat number six. Fleet was later asked as an important witness about the exact background of the accident, but his answers weren't very helpful. So he could neither tell how high the crow's nest was, nor how far away the iceberg was when he discovered it. In fact, Fleet didn't even know if it was a minute or an hour between the iceberg sighting and the crash. The Brit simply said to the Commission of Inquiry, I have no idea about sizes and distances. After the death of his wife, Frederick Fleet took his own life on January 10, 1965. It can be difficult to comprehend just how tragic the loss of the Titanic was. Many years later, it's become increasingly hard to empathize with all of those who were on board the ship, but these priceless artifacts help transport us back in time to a moment when so many people were filled with hope about starting a new life in America, only to have those dreams crushed by the sudden appearance of an iceberg. The fear that these people must have been filled with is is unreal, but it's a constant reminder of how we should never take ourselves too seriously, as our lives can be taken from us in the blink of an eye. Alright folks, now your opinion matters. Which Titanic find has you most intrigued with its backstory? We're already looking forward to your comments. Feel free to give our video a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Finally, 
why not take a look at the other exciting posts on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures in the credits now. Thank you for watching, have a good one, and see you next time.